Welcome back to my series, Dance Mums Uncovered. Abby has complained time and time again about how strict and restrictive the Dance Mums filming contracts were. It's peculiar that we then hear cast members revealing that the ALDC studio contracts were extremely controlling, forbidding them from doing many things that other kids wouldn't have to think twice about doing. Because there was much more to the studio contracts than Abby cared to show. Feel free to share your thoughts on the following evidence. First, let's look at forbidden activities. Multiple cast members have revealed that Abby's contracts forbade them from doing particular activities outside of dance. While some things were banned for safety reasons, others just seemed completely over-controlling. During an episode of Because Mum Said So, the mums revealed that Abby wouldn't let the girls do Soul Cycle because she said that it would make their legs too big. Recently, Christy and Kelly confirmed that Abby's contract forbade the kids from riding bikes altogether. Roller skating was also prohibited, and sometimes Abby would ban the kids from swimming. The kids would occasionally swim anyway, hoping that Abby wouldn't find out. Apparently, even something as simple as opening a candy wrapper in the audience was also listed in the contract as a banned activity. I could do soul cycle. It's an exercise bike, isn't it? Cause same thing. And the, uh, and the girls have been doing it for a while. You know, there was just like a little spurt of time they were doing that. So I went one day. Until they time. got in trouble, remember? Abby wouldn't let them. Made their legs too big. If you guys had seen the contract, you'd die. Like, you're not allowed to open candy during a theater performance. You're not allowed to ice skate. I don't think the roller skate, God, you weren't allowed to ski. I get skiing. Uh, you weren't allowed to ride a bike. The girls weren't allowed to go swimming and they still did. And when Abby would go past, they would go <laughs> underwater. <laughs> the ALDC contracts also prohibited the girls from going to nail salons to get their nails colored. Nia says that when she left the ALDC, she developed an interest in getting her nails done because she wasn't able to do it as a kid. Even French tips weren't acceptable in Abby's eyes. She still stands by her criticism of Paige's nails in Season 1, Episode 1, saying that Paige should have known to tell the nail technician not to put French tips on her. And yet Kelly revealed that the ALDC senior company always had French tips on their nails, and Abby was fine with those kids having them. But then when it came to the Highlands getting them, Abby decided to scold them for it. When I used to dance a lot, like for competitions, I was not allowed to have nails. So like I would only get like clear nails or like like nude nails, like stuff that like matched my skin. The child should know to say to the nail lady, my mother said French, I don't want French. I just want a nude, plain, little light pink nail. That's it. Every one of the seniors, they always had the French tip. Yeah. Always. So I figured it was okay for them to have a French tip. It wasn't like they had them painted a color. Abby herself has declared that the ALDC contract forbade competition dancers from ice skating, skiing, or sled riding. Nia has confirmed this, saying that she has never been skiing or snowboarding before because she wasn't allowed to do those things while she was competing. No ice skating, no skiing, no sled riding. I have never been skiing, snowboarding, that type of stuff. Doing competition dance, I wasn't allowed to do any of those things because you could get hurt. Just haven't, haven't gotten around to it yet. Abby says that the show's producers had a copy of the ALDC contract and therefore knew that she forbade ice skating for her students. She believes that they organized the kids to skate in New York in order to get under her skin. Abby then turns around and tries to criticize Melissa for not involving Maddie in other activities as a child as though she herself didn't dictate what the kids could and couldn't do outside of dance. Those kids skating was a dumb move and the producers knew it. They had a copy of the contract and they wanted to get under my skin. She isn't a good skater. Her mother never had her at all the lessons and doing this and doing that like I was and everything. Next, let's explore rules for the kids. A copy of the old Rain Dance Productions website has been archived online, which includes a list of rules that the kids had to follow in the studio. These rules include clauses that if students arrive 10 minutes late, they aren't allowed to participate in the class. Students have to leave water bottles in the den. Students are only allowed up in the observation mezzanine for half an hour. And to be considered part of the Abbey Lee Dance Company competition program, students must be enrolled in all styles of dance. The only exception is graduating seniors, who are allowed to lessen their class load. During Season 3, Episode 3 of Dance Mums, we see Kelly holding an ALDC contract. 
By flipping the image and increasing the contrast, we can see that dancers had to agree to the following rules. Company commitment is a full year from September 2012 through August 2013. Up to five mandatory regional comps between September 2012 and June 2013. ALDC competition dancers slash ALDC members must participate in the annual dance concert. Company members must take 75% of their dance instruction at Rain Dance Productions under the instruction of Abby Lee Miller. The remaining 25% will encompass authorised ALDC masterclasses and dance conventions. There are more terms on this page, but I struggled to decipher much beyond this line. Then there was the studio's dress code, which addressed several other rules. Students' hair had to be kept off the back of their necks and out of their faces. Acceptable hairstyles included a ponytail, bun or French braid. Cover-ups were mandatory for students to wear to and from class. It was forbidden to enter or leave the studio in their dance attire. Brooke has confirmed that the studio's dress code was very strict. She says that when she was dropped off at dance and didn't want to attend ballet class, she would change out of her dance attire so that she wasn't allowed to go into her class. Kelly and Christy have also declared that the ALDC had rules against having tan lines, and Chloe revealed that there was even a clause saying that the girls weren't allowed to gain or lose 10 pounds during a competition season. Our studio didn't let you into ballet if you didn't have a black leotard and pink tights, and of course my mom knew ballet days, so she would drop me off in that, I'd go to the bathroom and change so they wouldn't let me in. And we're not allowed to have tan lines. That is rule number one of the ALDC. To be a part of our studio, you had to sign a contract. A few of the main reasons I, well, my mom wouldn't sign was because it said stuff like you couldn't gain or lose five to 10 pounds, something like that. You couldn't do anything to your hair. As for competition etiquette, Abby owns the fact that her dancers weren't allowed to watch their competitors. Both Melissa and Maddie have claimed that Abby refused to let them communicate with or be friends with girls from other studios. Abby argued against this claim, saying that as a dance teacher, she can't tell kids who to be friends with. But given all the other rules we've seen her enforce thus far, I wouldn't be surprised if she tried to control the social lives of her students too. They weren't allowed to talk to other studios. Their friends from other studios would come over and Abby would be like, you know, don't communicate with them. You are not allowed to watch your competitors. This business about you can't be friends with them. I'm a dance teacher. I am not going to tell you who you can and can't be friends with. Evidence number three, requirements for the parents. We certainly don't know all of the requirements that studio parents were expected to uphold, but the ones that we have been told about are rather strange. There was apparently a rule that parents could only watch their kids in their classes once per month. Melissa says that she used to try and hide upstairs and watch more often than that. You were only allowed to go to the studio once a month to watch, up in the, the, um, the fishbowl, we used to call it. Um, and I would go up there and sit in the corner, like on the ground. I didn't know she knew I was there, because I would hide. Many of the mums claim that at competitions, they weren't allowed to talk to people from other studios, nor were they allowed to clap for other teams when they were competing on the East Coast. Christy and Kelly also claim that the mums weren't allowed to scream from the audience and had to uphold a certain level of audience etiquette. This is why they found it rather hypocritical when Melissa and Abby gave Maddie a screaming standing ovation during season two. Abby mentions that her contracts banned parents from going to bars while they were at competitions. However, she didn't specify whether or not this rule was in place during the filming of season one, episode one. When we were in Pittsburgh, we weren't allowed to talk to the other moms. We weren't allowed to talk to the other studios. We weren't allowed to clap for the other kids. Abby and Melissa gave Maddie a standing ovation for this dance. But they were screaming too. We're not yeah. allowed to do that. How you present yourself and your mom and dad can't get drunk in the bar at the competition. Mm -hmm. Those were the things in the contract at the ALDC. Four, financial obligations. Abby and other cast members have revealed that Abby's contract promised her financial compensation under particular circumstances. Abby says that all the studio kids signed a contract, stating that if she got them work, they needed to give her 10% of all their earnings. She claims that a producer ripped up her contracts, declaring that she would be earning so much money from the show that she wouldn't need the 10%. All the kids in my studio, every single one, from two and a half years old to 18, signed a document that said, if I got them work, that I got 10% of that. But a producer stood there and literally ripped 
the contracts in half. Abby may act like she missed out on her 10% for the entirety of the show's run, but Chloe revealed that Abby's contract in season four reinstated this rule, demanding that the kids give her 10% of all the money they made. After all, Kelly says that Abby was very supportive of Brooke's music career, up until Kelly decided that Abby wouldn't be her manager and she wouldn't get 10% of her profits. But we saw how nice she is to our kids. If you treat our kids that way, why would we have you be our kids' manager? Is it because she's not getting 10%? I'm thinking that's why. Absolutely. I told you. She was all for Brooke singing until I said no. She was not allowed to be my manager. And then she was like completely negative about it. Christy and Kelly claim that Abby's contract said that if any title holders left within a year of winning a title, they were required to pay Abby $100,000 in cash within seven days of leaving. Brooke, Paige, and Chloe always held some sort of title, so the rule was always a threat to them. If you tried to leave during that year as you were a reigning title holder, you owed her $100,000 cash within seven days. Well, and, and the reason why you and I always had such a problem, our kids always had a title. According to the Rain Dance Productions website, all male students were given partial tuition scholarships. Apparently, many of the girls at the studio were paying five times the amount that they were. The site declares that if a male student is asked to leave the class due to misbehaviour, their tuition will immediately be changed to the full price. And finally, who refused to sign the contracts? Kathy says that in season one, Abby handed her a contract on the first day of filming. Even though she was only at the ALDC to film the show, Abby was demanding that she pay $500 and have Vivi attend a certain number of classes per week. Kathy says that she didn't want to sign it, so she threw it away and avoided the topic whenever Abby brought it up. She was shocked that Abby thought her commitment to the studio was real. The very first day that I walked into the studio to film, she handed me like a contract and, you know, you're going to have to pay me $500 and oh. Vivi's going to have to be in th this many classes to compete. And she kept saying to me, did you sign that contract yet? And, and I mean, I remember I kept tap dancing around it. So I just got rid of it. I threw it away. I was like, I'm not paying you. No. This isn't real, Abby. In season one, episode five, Abby handed Christy a contract at a donut shop. Apparently, this contract said that she couldn't go into the den and various other places in the studio. Christy says that she didn't sign the contract because she was on the show and needed to be able to film in those areas. And then I go to talk about the, the contract, which says I'm not allowed in the den, the dressing room. I agree that I'm in the wrong. Well, here's the problem with this contract. I'm filming a television show. Yeah, how can you not walk in the dressing room? <laughs> and, walk and, yeah. into these places. So I'm like, I'm not signing this. This is stupid. Christy says that in season three, the lawyer that all the mums shared told them to sign the ALDC contracts. By the time season four rolled around, Chloe says that she and her mum refused to sign it. Kelly has recently declared that she didn't sign Abby's studio contract in season four either. That last year, we wouldn't sign it. I know. So that's why she's like, you know, just smiling because she knew we had to sign it because we had to be on the show. And like, I remember our attorney calling being like, you have to sign Abby's contract. So what do you guys think? Do these seem like pretty standard dance studio rules or are they super controlling? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.